outfits. Let's talk proportions. Whether you're searching for outfits that make you look taller, smaller, or just right, what you need to focus on is learning your proportions because then you can get to messing with them. Bodies come in all shapes and sizes, and this is not about all of us becoming perceived hourglasses. No. Rather, this is about balance and proportions and understanding what works for your body and what you look best in and where you can play with your silhouette. First, let's break down what proportion even means because I'm sure that you've heard it, but if you actually had to define it, could you? Don't worry, I got you covered. So when we look at our bodies, and this is true for most body typing systems, we're looking at our horizontal lines in our body and we're looking at where our body juts out and where it doesn't jut out and the overall horizontal shape that it creates. It's basically the front view of our bodies. Now proportions is dealing with our vertical shape. It's looking at the elongation or lack thereof in our limbs, our torso, and how they relate to each other. Now, good old Leonardo da Vinci, our founding fashion father, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He created a system that's used for many, many years thereafter about how the body is eight heads high. And this is how he broke it down. Up of the head to the base of the chin, base of the chin to mid bust, mid bust to natural waist, natural waist to leg break, leg break to mid thigh, mid thigh to knee bend, knee bend to mid calf, mid calf to base of the foot. And it's basically been used as a figure drawing template for years and years to come since he created it. However, most of us are not the Vitruvian man and we do not have perfect eight head high proportions. Excuse me? Okay, yes, she's perfect, but most of us are not. Let's figure out your unique proportions. Get into some form-fitting clothing. Take a full-length photo of your body from chest level. We are going to be measuring our own unique proportions using our own head size. Print out your photo. Draw a plumb line to keep your line straight. Measure your head exactly. Mine is one inch. Then draw out lines in your head's increment down your body. Start to notice where your waist and hips and other part, body parts land compared to your head lines. Now, what does this all mean? Now, if you've done the exercise and you happen to have perfect portions throughout, then getting dressed for you will be a little bit less like Jenga. For the rest of us normal folk, you're going to have one of the combinations. You can either have a short torso with long legs or a long torso with short legs or some variation of that in between. But what if I'm really tall? What if I'm really short? So where does height play into this? Do tall people automatically have long limbs? Well, not necessarily, because it's all about your proportions compared to your other attributes in your body. So short people can look tall and tall people can look short. Where height will come into play is how things fit. And we can do a separate video about that. Just leave it in the comments below. You've done the exercises, you have all your heads. What does that actually mean? If you are exactly eight heads in length, then your head is in proportion to your body. If you are more than eight heads high, then your head is shorter. And if you are less than eight heads high, then your head is long. For your upper torso or your chin to your waist, if it is two heads in length, you're in proportion. Less than two heads in length, short-waisted. More than two heads in length, long-waisted. For your rise or the distance from your crotch to your waist, one head in proportion. Less than one head, your rise is shorter. More than one head, your rise is longer. Now let's look at your legs. This is measured from your crotch to the soles of your feet. Four heads length, you're in proportion. Less than four heads, your legs are shorter. More than four heads, your legs are longer. Now doing this may trigger some feelings. None of us wanna to be told we're shorter or longer where we want to be longer or shorter. But this is important information. It can really help you understand your body more. Now you may think that your specific combination of long, short, or proportionate is incredibly unique. Throughout all of time, we have seen every different proportion displayed. So what is dressing for your proportions? What does it actually mean? To a certain degree, it's about balance. It's not about creating an hourglass shape. It's about balancing your silhouette so you feel more even because our eye is drawn to symmetry. So here's the ninja tip that is going to change the way you think about proportionate dressing. Where you are shorter, you want to optically lengthen. Where you are longer, you want to optically shorten. You're kidding, aren't you? I know. Having this information is more like foundational information. It's n you're not only ever going to dress this way, but once you understand the proportions, you can take it and run with it. This is like your ABCs. Once you learn your ABCs, you can go off and write a novel, but before you learn your ABCs, you need to understand how words work together. How does your body work with clothes? How do your proportions work with clothes? How does your unique body fit together? You're allowed to break it, but you gotta understand it first. And if you're rolling your eyes and you're like, that's it. I'm off the deep end.
So you've taken your photo, you've taken your notes, and you figured out where you fall on the spectrum of eight heads high. We're gonna go through some tips and tricks on how to visually lengthen and shorten different pieces of your body using your wardrobe. First, we're gonna start off with your legs. So if you have short legs, how do you optically lengthen them? If your legs are shorter, we need to visually lengthen them. You can try pushing your sleeves up to three quarter sleeves or choose half length sleeves. You're essentially shortening your arms visual length and balancing out your legs. If you have to wear long sleeves, try ones that taper at the wrist or have deep cuffs. You can also try wearing pants that taper at the ankle or hem. Wearing shorter jackets or laying pieces, especially when wearing longer skirts or bottoms can help as well. And alternatively, you can wear long jackets that match the hem of your shorter items underneath, keeping the focus on the top of your body and blurring where your legs begin. Now, moving on to longer legs. It may seem slightly counterintuitive to want to shorten your legs, but this is all about proportionate dressing and balance is key. So you can shorten your legs appearance by opt for jackets and coats that have a longer hem or longer in length. Long sleeves that don't break your vertical from top to bottom, pieces that emphasize a lower waist, and design elements that have visual impact on your torso. Or design breaks within the lower half of your body. So let's move on to your waist. If you have a shorter waist, we want to optically lengthen it. You can use the blouson or bloused over effect. This creates a blurrier waistline while still not having you swallowed up in fabric. Shorter jackets that hit just below the waist so that the waist peeks out, but our eye can't quite pinpoint where. You can also hide your waist with a tunic. And for pants, you'll want a slightly shorter rise that will most likely hit above your natural waist. So depending on your size, you could try a mid-rise size that may look a bit more high rise. If you have a longer waist, we need to shorten its appearance. You could add wider design elements around your waistline and continue that visual down through your bottoms. You can see here that I have a thick belt that's black and trousers that match. This tricks the eye. You'll also want to shoot for design elements that already have a higher waistline and ideally not too form-fitting of a bottom. You can also try adding visual details to the tops of your garment, especially horizontal or diagonal details, as the eye will stop to take those elements in and your waist will become less of a focal point. Paper bag bands can also help blur your waist emphasis. And vertical prints can help extend your lower half so that they seem more in balance with your waist. So I want to pause here and say that this is a lot of technical information. And if you're taking notes, you may be like overwhelmed already. So will you implement every single one of these guidelines every single day? Probably not. It may change the relationship you have with clothing because you're going to start to see how it falls on your body differently. And it may help you shop differently as well. Now let's move on to rise. If you have a shorter rise, you're going to want to optically lengthen that area by drawing the eye up, and you can do that with a mid to higher rise pants. Now, because you have a shorter rise, a mid rise pant may look high rise on you, so I try these options on in person. You can also try a one piece jumpsuit, which vis visually balances out your body overall, or V necks, long necklaces, and drop waist dresses, all to visually extend that rise. Now, if you have a shorter rise and a shorter waist, then you'll probably want to de-emphasize the waist and dress in the golden ratio, which we will get into shortly. Now, if you have a longer rise, you can try trousers that have a yoke or any diagonal lines around your waist or hip area, which will keep the eye from taking in the length of your rise and draw the eye diagonally instead of vertically. Belts can also help you do this. Now, if you have a long rise and a long waist, diagonal lines are especially helpful. Wrap dresses or skirts can help visually draw your eye diagonally instead of vertically. You can also try a layering bloused over effect that adds more visual weight to your waist and helps balance out the longer rise. Now, let's talk about hems. First and foremost, you have to be comfortable. So no matter how tall or short you are, I'm not going to tell you to wear a mini skirt or wear a full length dress. I want you to find strength through style. I don't want you to conform to something just because it's ideal or balances out your frame. How do you find hemlines that work for your body? Well, I personally find the easiest way to do this, and I know I say this a lot, is to start snapping photos of yourself with different hemlines on. Once you do that, you'll start to visually see, okay, longer hemlines definitely draw out my vertical line or shorter hemlines just kind of chop me up and shorten me and make me appear wider. I have a video that talks a little bit about hemlines. You can check it out here. And actually, hem length can sometimes be the least important factor when dealing with proportions. And I know that seems counterintuitive, but many stylists and designers believe that as long as you're working with the golden ratio, hem length does not matter as much. 
Here we can see three different outfits, all with three different hem lengths, all using the golden ratio. Can you clarify the golden ratio, please? The golden ratio. The golden ratio is our eye's magnetism towards one third, one to two, and two to one proportions. And that's why we prefer something like this ratio, which is a one to two ratio, or a one third to two thirds ratio. This option, which is a two thirds to one third ratio, versus something like this that cuts me up solidly in half. Now, can you ever use halves or other different metrics for proportions? Absolutely. But once you master the golden ratio, you understand how to break those rules more strategically and less with less chaos involved. So this can help you figure out which hem lengths you like on yourself. If you take in the photos, you can start evaluating them a little bit better. This can help you dress more in sync with your body and it can help you find your body overall balance points. It also helps us design an outfit that harmonizes with our body instead of against our body because we understand where our body falls within the scale of the eight heads high and how to balance out certain portions of our body, which we just went over. So ultimately, you have a lot of different pieces all working together, and we wanna create a recipe that creates the most perfect outfit we've ever seen in our life. And we need to take the following into consideration. Our body's proportion, the styling of our clothes, the design elements within the clothes, and our overall silhouette. Now, we've seen that our bodies have proportions, so how do our clothes also have proportions? So the balance of our clothes or the balance of our pairings of pieces of clothes that we wear also have proportions because we're not all walking around naked like the Vitruvian man. That would be weird. <laughs> now we never want to hinder our personal style. Personal style is first and foremost. But what we want to do is we want to start understanding these fashion 101 basics so that we know how to play and with our styles and expand our styles. Once you understand the basic proportions and what looks good on body, your body, then you can start expanding past that. So, what is the art of pleasing proportions? We want our outfits to have enough difference for interest, but not so much that it creates an imbalance or disharmonious outfit. So here we have an outfit that cuts me up directly in half. It's not very visually interesting, and it's also not very visually pleasing. When we have an extreme relationship between proportions, we tend to lose interest in one of the pieces. So you can see that in this outfit. That tiny white design element, while it's interesting, is vastly overpowered by the long green dress. Let's look at some ways to use the golden ratio. And if you're starting to get overwhelmed, I suggest you start taking photos of your own variations of the following outfit so that you can start seeing things more clearly. You might look like a narcissist because you'll have 10,000 photos of yourself on your phone, but it's worth it, I promise. It's research, okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what is a visual impact line? It's something like here, here, and here. It's where our eye is naturally drawn to when we take in an outfit. It can also be a horizontal line break within the outfit, something like this. So we've talked a lot about proportions. How do proportions and silhouettes work together? So style proportions also have to do with silhouette, which we learned about in the last video, and it's linked in the description below. We have a wide bottom and a fitted top, and a fitted bottom and a wide top. They create two different silhouettes, even though they're both using a one to two proportion. Now, if we take this denim on denim outfit that I'm wearing here, proportionately, these pieces kind of cut me up in half, but because of the angled hem and the matching denim, your eye goes from head to toe without disruption. Now, the shoulder interest is where your eye is drawn in first, which is where your eye begins to take in the outfit. Design interest points or focal points can affect how the outfit is taken in from head to toe. So let's look at two examples. First, we have a super bottom heavy look. This outfit is proportionally dressing in the rule of thirds. We have one third on top, two thirds on bottom. But because there is volume and chunky boots at the bottom, our eyes are naturally drawn to the bottom of this outfit. Compare that to the, out the same outfit with heels on. 
They look different, right? So it's not just about dressing for your body's proportions. You have to take into consideration all of the elements we talked about in the last video. Line, silhouette, texture, focal points. They can all affect your visual proportions of an outfit and where your eye is drawn to. Essentially, we are using focal points to draw the eye in wherever we want it to go. This can be called adding the drama. So we scale up the elements to add the drama. Something like chunky boots here or statement earrings here. Our eye is naturally drawn to the larger scale elements. On the counter side, we can also scale down the details on areas we want to de-emphasize or minimize their impact. So I threw a lot of information at you and you might be a little bit overwhelmed. I mean, I think you'll be all right. You're just gonna have to, you know, take it one day at a time. Here's my disclaimer. You are a beautiful, stylish rock star and only you can decide what is right for you. So if there's a proportion trick or a guideline that isn't gelling with you, trash it. Don't give it a second thought. Until next time.